Hello there, in this video we are going to talk about the incredible central limit theorem. You may not think incredible when you first learn about it, but actually this is one of the most powerful theorems in statistics that it allows us to make inferences and guesses about the true values of population means and population proportions. Very, very powerful. So what's going to be happening now is instead of finding the probability that some data value is less than, greater than, or between some designated values, we are now going to look at what is the probability that a sample mean, the mean of a sample, is less than, greater than, or between some designated values. So here we go, central limit theorem. <clears throat> so by definition, the central limit theorem for sample means says that if you keep drawing larger and larger samples and calculating their means, the sample means form their own normal distribution, called the sampling distribution. So let me put this into perspective for you. So what's going to happen is, imagine I have this pool of test results, like I have 500 test results from some test that was given at the college. Anyway, if I randomly grab 10 results, 10 test scores, and average them, I found the mean of that sample. Well, what if I grab another 10 results? And then I find their average. I find the mean of that sample. I grab another 10 results. I average them. I find the mean of that sample. I grab another 10, another 10, another 10. I keep grabbing in groups of 10 randomly, and I keep recording what is the mean of each of those samples. Well, if I make a histogram using those sample means, the histogram will actually be bell-shaped. The data will be normally distributed. And as my sample sizes get bigger and bigger, like if I pull in groups of 30, groups of 40, groups of 50, I can guarantee that the distribution of sample means, the means of those samples, will be normally distributed. That's what the central limit theorem is telling us. So the following are assumed. The random variable x has a distribution, which may or may not be normal, with mean mu and standard deviation sigma, and in simple random samples all of size n are selected from the population. So remember we could do sample sizes of 10, 20, 30. As that sample size goes up, the distribution of the sample means will become normal approximately. So when to use the central limit theorem? Well ideally the central limit theorem is used for samples of size n larger than 30. So larger than 30. 30 is kind of that magic number where our distribution of sample means becomes clearly normal. <clears throat> 2. If the original population is normally distributed, then for any sample size n, the sample means will be normally distributed. So sample size is larger than 30. And if the original population is normally distributed, I can guarantee to you that the distribution of sample means will also be normally distributed, not just for values of n larger than 30. <clears throat> Remember, 30 is that magic number. So the mean of the sample means, also known as the sampling distribution, the mean of the sample means. So remember I was taking those test results 10 at a time or 20 at a time or 30 at a time, and I was calculating each of their means. Well, if I take all of those means and then I average them, the mean of that sampling distribution, mu sub x bar, the mean of those sample means will be the mean of the distribution itself, mu. The standard deviation of the sample means, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is not so obvious. The standard deviation of the sample means that's why you have the subscript of x bar, the standard deviation sigma of the sample means, is the standard deviation of the actual original data values distribution itself divided by the square root of the sample size. Make sure you make a note of this formula. In other words, the standard deviation is adjusted when you're trying to look at the standard deviation of a sampling distribution, the distribution of the sample means, as opposed to the distribution of basic sample values. So here's an illustration showing you, okay, if I pull data values in sizes of one, yeah, I don't get a very cool distribution. If I pull data values five at a time, I get closer to a bell shape, 
pull data values 10 at a time. Pretty nice bell shape still. 20 at a time. Really good spread out bell shape. If his n was equal to 30, it would be even more bell shape, 40, 50, 60, and so forth. So larger sample sizes are definitely idea and are definitely beneficial. So the big idea, to summarize the central limit theorem to you, as the sample size increases, the sampling distribution of sample means, we're looking at the distribution of the sample means rather than data values now, approaches a normal distribution. <clears throat> so how about the classic elevator question? Have you ever gone into an elevator and looked at the maximum weight capacity? Is that maximum weight capacity safe? How was that maximum weight capacity found? I'm going to talk to you about that now. Suppose an elevator has a maximum capacity of 16 passengers with a total weight of 2,500 pounds. Assuming a worst case scenario in which the passengers are all male, because males have a tendency to be heavier than females most of the time, what are the chances the elevator is overloaded? Assume male weights follow a normal distribution with the mean of 182.9 and a standard deviation of 40.8. So when looking at just the actual data values themselves, they follow a normal distribution with a given mean and a given standard deviation. <laughs> now we're going to answer some questions. So part A, if 16 males are in the elevator, what is the average weight beyond which the elevator would be considered overloaded? Well, let's think about this. What is the total capacity of that elevator? How many pounds? Well, that elevator can hold up to 25 pounds. If it was distributed up among 16 males or 16 people, that is about 156.25 pounds on average per person that would be allowed. Not very much. That's step one. <clears throat> step two. Find the probability that one randomly selected male, that's just one data value, this is just like previously what we did in the module, has a weight greater than 156.25. <clears throat> find, find the probability that one data value is greater than 156.25. So this is the same rhythm that we've done previously in the module. We put our mean right in the middle of our bell curve which is 182.9 and then label our data value we're interested in 156.25 now we're looking for probability that a male will be greater than 156.25 so the probability a single person a single male on the elevator will have a weight greater than 156.25 well, in Google Sheets, you will have to take note what is your mean, mu, 182.9, and what is your standard deviation, sigma. This is just like all the other questions in the module. We are dealing with one data value. So our sigma is exactly as they gave it to us in the question, 40.8. And then <laughs> lower bound of our shaded region is 156.25 and upper bound of our region will be well, technically infinity but we just use six nines six nines and we will type this into Google Sheets so where are you Google Sheets here we are well we're going to go to the compute tab and we're going to be in the normal region and our mu is going to be 182.9 standard deviation is going to be 40.8 our lower bound is going to be 156.25 and upper bound is six nines you could do seven if you want but it's not really going to change anything you get about 0 0.7431 0 0.74 sorry 0 0.7432 if you round the four decimal places 0.7432 0.7432 Two. That's the probability one data value, one person's weight, will be above 156.25. But that's great. 
but I'm interested in the whole group as a whole. I'm interested in knowing those 16 people in the elevator. Find the probability that a sample of 16 males have a mean weight greater than 156.25. I want to know about their average. <laughs> so I'm looking for the probability that the mean of that sample of 16 people will be greater than 156.25 because if their average weight's more than that, we have a problem. That elevator might fall down. It may not be able to handle that load. Uh-oh. So we are now talking about a sample mean. We are now talking about our sampling distribution. This is where the central limit theorem kicks in. So the good news is the mean of the sampling distribution, the mean of the sample means, is just the mean of our, of our given situation, the mean weight of men, 182.9. That does not change, ever. It's the standard deviation where you need to be careful. My standard deviation of my sample means, sigma sub x bar, is equal to the standard deviation of my population of my male weights divided by square root of the sample size. So that's 40.8 divided by square root of 16. 16 because I'm dealing with 16 people. So that's 40.8 divided by 4, or 10.2. <clears throat> so take my warning when I say this is where most people mess up. They forget to adjust their standard deviation. I'm doing this because we're now looking at the probability of a mean weight being greater than 156.25 as opposed to a single weight, a single data value. I'm looking at a mean now. So Google Sheets, <laughs> you'll type in mu, you'll type in 189.2, you'll type in sigma, Type in your adjusted standard deviation, 10.2. If you do have to round, the more decimal places you keep, the better in terms of sigma. And then you just label your lower bound and your upper bound. In my picture, you're still dealing with 156.25. And you're looking at greater than. So my lower bound would have to be 156.25, and upper bound is 6 nines. It's the, practically the same information as the previous part of the question, except because I'm dealing with the sample mean, the standard deviation has to be adjusted to 10.2. So Google Sheets, you adjust the standard deviation to 10.2, and you get 0 0.9955, 0 0.9955, 0 0.9955. Oh gosh. So the probability that that elevator will be overloaded is actually 99.55%. So because the maximum capacity is 16 and they have that weight threshold of 2,500 pounds, if 16 men get in there, which would be a worst case scenario where there's the most weight in there, there's a 99.55% chance or 0.9955 probability that elevator will be overloaded. Yikes. So I think we need to call the elevator company and be like, hey, you should reconsider your safety guidelines here. <clears throat> and then they thank us and they send us a check again for like $2,000, right? Yeah, the power of statistics. Pretty awesome, I would say. So suppose women's heights we never talk about weights of women, so let's be safe and let's talk heights. Suppose women's heights are normally distributed with a mean of 62.1 inches and a standard deviation of 2.6. If one woman is randomly selected, that's one data value. That's one data value. I'll be neater here. One data value. <clears throat> Find the probability her height will be between 61.6 and 62.7. So always put your mean right smack dab in the middle of your bell curve and always make sure you draw a picture. <clears throat> I'm looking for probability data values between about 61.6 and 62.7. So these data values are down here along the quote x-axis. I'm looking for the area between them. The probability a data value is between them. All right, so I'm going to get 
let's just write out our notation, the probability a data value will be between 61.6 .6 and 62.7 is whatever Google Sheets tells us. So we're talking about one data value, so it's business as usual, just like the rest of this module. Mu is going to be 62.1, and sigma will be 2.6. Then you need your lower bound and your upper bound. Lower bound, 61.6. Upper bound, 62.7. You type those four things into Google Sheets. So normal region under the Compute tab. And you got 62.1, 2.6 for sigma, lower bound of 61.6, upper bound of 62.7. So it's your job to extract those numbers from the question. Make sure you draw your picture. You get 0.1675. You get 0.1675. That's great and all when you're dealing with one data value, but we want to be a bit more powerful here. Let's talk about if 10 women are selected. A sample of 10 men. A sample of 10 men are randomly selected. 10 women are randomly selected. Find the probability they have a mean height. So we're now looking at sample mean. Sample mean. Between 61.6 and 62.7 all right so it's still the same picture you have your mean of 62.1 in the middle and then 61.6 and 62.7 are the two data values you want to find the area between the probability that a sample mean is between these two values So now we're dealing with a sample mean. This is my sampling distribution. So this is where the simple central limit theorem comes into play. I want the probability that a sample mean, a mean of 10 women, will be between 61.6 and 62.7. You're looking at a sample mean now, the average of those 10 women. So think central limit theorem. Sample mean, think central limit theorem. So your mu is still going to be the same. It's still going to be the good old 62.1. It's your sigma that has to be adjusted. So put a star by sigma. That's like the one thing people forget quite often. You take your original standard deviation and divide by the square root of your sample size. So you're going to take 2.6 and you're going to divide by square root of 10. So when you do that, you get about 0.82. If you want to keep more decimal places, please do. Your answer will be more accurate. And your lower bound and upper bound are the same as the previous part of the question. So Google Sheets, the only thing you have to change is that sigma to 0.82. Except more, keep more decimal places to get more accurate answer. And you'll get 0.4968 rounded to four decimal places. 0 0.4968. 0 0.4968. So that's the probability that a sample of 10 women will have an average or a sample mean of between 61.6 and 62.7. So the probability is 0.4968. Once again, central limit theorem, we had to adjust sigma by dividing by the square root of the sample size, the square root of 10 in this case. So really powerful result. We're going to be doing more with the central limit theorem as we progress further into the course. But anyway, for now, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed.